Hello there! This is Kubrick and welcome back to my channel LEGO fans for the finale of the False Emperor building series. I can't believe it's finally here. I felt like this day would never come because I've never spent so much time and effort on one build before. But at last it's all here and I am so happy I can finally show it to you guys, complete it and bigger and better than any build I've made on this channel here before. But of course, before I'll show you the complete build and walk you through all the details and techniques I've incorporated in this mock, there are a few things I want to mention. Most importantly, a huge shout out and thank you to all of you guys who came to see the finale, as well as those who were with me through the whole building series, supported me with your comments here on YouTube as well as on Instagram, and gave me some valuable tips on how to improve this build even more than I was going to. I can't tell you guys how much that all means to me and how it gave me the motivation to put even more effort into this build because the end result totally exceeded my expectations. Also thanks to all of you new viewers who tagged along on this journey with me and because of this building series could discover all the fun stuff I've been building before. Can't wait to get to know you guys more as I continue on this LEGO YouTube adventure with even more awesome builds. And of course, if it's your first time here, welcome and enjoy what you will see here today and I hope you will stay here for longer. Now with all that said, let's get into some details, shall we? And let's start with the overall size of the mock and some technical details just so you can get the idea of what you are going to see. So it's about 90 cm long, over 55 cm wide in its widest part and nearly 60 cm high, measuring from the table. Of course the build would be a few bricks lower if it wasn't hovering over the table on some trans supports, but they are still an element of the mock so it counts as a part of the whole build. The build took me about 5 months which I divided into 7 build in progress updates and the finished mock has somewhere between 15 and 20,000 pieces in which almost 5,000 had to be ordered specifically for this mock. But I'm sure you got enough of me just talking and showing you small glimpses of the build when you came here to see the whole completed thing, so here it is guys, the False Emperor's Throne Room. And go ahead and tell me that's not impressive. I took so much effort in building this thing, but the end result is just mind blowing. I knew it was going to be big way before I even started building this mock, and I was not wrong because it's the biggest build I've made so far. The idea of making this exact scene came to me already about 10 years ago, when the game was released and I got my hands on the Fury Class Interceptor set number 9500. My main character in the game was and actually still is a Sith Marauder who flew this starship in the game and since the set came with Darth Malgus' figure, I got an idea to build one of my favorite scenes from the game with LEGO. Someday, because that was way before I got into mock building seriously. And now, after years of waiting, it is standing here before me. You can't imagine how satisfied I am at the moment. For those who are not familiar with the game, I thought I'll make a quick recap of the story which is being shown here, while I show you some main elements of the build, and then we'll talk about each detail individually. So Darth Malgus was one of the most powerful Sith of the Old Republic era, which is set about 3500 years before the events of the New Hope. In the real Emperor's Vitiate absence, Malgus decided to transform the Empire in his bidding and take over the throne for himself. 
In the story of a Flashpoint mission called the False Emperor, a group of players are ordered to stop Melgus at any cost and depending on which side you are playing on, either secure the throne for Vitiate to return or stop one of the most powerful enemies in quest for galactic peace. For this scene, I chose the light side of the force to be the one fighting against the Sith Lord, but I also wanted to make use of the dark side figures, so I decided to let them help out our main antagonist. So we have two Jedi marching toward the throne, one being a Twi'lek Jedi Knight wielding a single lightsaber, and the other a Cathar Jedi Consular with a double-bladed one. Assisting them are a dual blaster wielding smuggler and of course a couple of Republic troopers, one with a huge Gatling laser and the other with a regular blaster rifle. But it won't be easy because Malgus is well protected by two Sith with a couple more friends. And here is of course my main character from the game, a Sith Zabrak Marauder named Darth Kibos and his Sith Inquisitor friend with her double-bladed lightsaber and some dark side tricks up her sleeve. Helping them are also two regular Sith troopers, an Empire agent and of course we had to have a Mandalorian bounty hunter added to the list. After this scene of course Darth Malgus's reign comes to an end but he will return further down the line, but if you want to see that story, you have to check it out by yourself. If you haven't played the game, I say at least give it a try, mostly for the story because it's wide and deeply engaging. Anyway, now that you know what the deal is with the story side of things, let's now focus on the technical part of the tour. Most of these elements you've already seen if you've been following the series from the beginning, but not with all the surroundings, so strap in. And let's start with the first section and the walkway to the throne. First of all, like I said, the whole mock is kinda suspended in the air because I've decided to place it on some trans clear panels just to keep that feeling of the throne being hovering in the air just like it was in the game. So building it was a bit tricky, but after I figured out how I want to make it, it all started to work out really good together. And of course the mock has to start somewhere, so I figured I'll make some gribbling in the front instead of a plain flat surface, which gives a nice vibe to the first section, and that feeling that it's been cut from the rest of the whole space station on which the scene takes place. Now going into the mock, the main element here is without a doubt the floor pattern. I wanted to make it as much reminiscent to the original design, so I decided to make it using some slopes and bricks placed sideways and I gotta say it turned out great. With the grill tiles going through the middle and the terminals on the sides, it really makes you feel like you're in the game. The terminals are made with a mix of different connections, but came out very similar to the originals, besides the scale of course, but that is something I had to take down all across the mock because it would take at least a half of my room if it was perfectly scaled to the minifigures. Between the bigger terminals we have also a couple of power converters or something, with a pretty simple yet different technique and behind those we have a bunch of stairs leading to the edge. The edge of the entire build is more inspired by the game rather than recreating it, simply because I thought it would look better that way. So we have some slanted minifigure stands finished up with some fence pieces in black, going all around both sides of the mock, with an addition of these three pylons for each side. Those are embedded into the wall in the upper part, but being totally suspended on the bottom, so they are barely touching the black tiles below. And since we're here, we have to take a look at the side walls, because even for a simple design as it is, it's very fitting here. With some tiles sticking out in the lower part and the snot pattern using spring shooters on the top, it's a perfect finish to a build like this. Now going back on the main path that our Jedi heroes have to take, we have to appreciate the stairs, which are quite simple in design, but also a bit fragile, because I had to make them hollow on the inside to make them lit from below using some LED lights. 
I have to admit that they are a pretty decent central part of the whole build, surrounded of course on both sides with the same pattern on the walls as on the outside of the mock, and two converters at the end leading all the way to this beautiful floor on the platform. The floor is definitely the most intricate and most eye-catching element of the whole build, but it also was the most time and part consuming element to construct. If you want to see how the techniques used for this pattern are looking like, then I encourage you to check out episode 4 of my building series where I showed how the inside support structure looks like. The floor consists of over 500 hexagon tiles, which is about 3000 pieces by its own, not to mention about 17 meters of flex tubes holding them from below. And here I have to give a huge shout out to my wife who helped me with assembling the hexagons because it would be a much longer process if it wasn't for the help. Covering the floor are two computer terminals which I really enjoyed building as they are very similar to the ones we got in the game given the scale I had to keep them in and a couple of crates made with a simple technique yet quite accurate as well with a lego stud instead of a Sith Empire insignia. And standing over them are of course two massive sit statues. And man, building them was one hell of a challenge. I'm not used to making big figures like this, so this was way out of my comfort zone, but what I came up with is exactly what I was aiming for. I won't get into too much details because I've talked about them in the last two episodes and even made a speed build of one of them in the previous one, but let's all appreciate how menacing they look staring on the minifigures from above. And of course, just like the stairs, also in the supports I placed a couple of LED lights just to make them have that small red glare from the sides and the white one from the front. And now the time came for the final and main element of the build which is the false emperor's throne itself. This is the newest addition to the mock which you haven't seen yet and it came out very good in my opinion. Of course I couldn't do the whole upper part as it is in the game, but I think this interpretation is good enough. Most importantly it is basically suspended in the air, held only with a couple of trans clear technic arms with the red glow coming from the bottom part of the throne. This was a very complicated element to build for sure, combining all sorts of different elements like the old castle and Blacktron wheels, a rubber track, couple of dishes, bunch of slopes and of course a technic seat being a seat piece here. I made it a bit different than it is in a game, but I had to incorporate the seat decorated tile from the Vader's castle. I think it fits perfectly to the theme of the build and looks very good above Malgus's head. And that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you guys in today's video. I can't believe it's finally done and I am so glad I got through it after 5 months of spending time and money I could at last share this awesome build with you guys. I hope you've enjoyed watching the finished mock as well as being with me on this journey through the whole series. And if you haven't watched the whole series, that's fine too. You can always watch it by following the link in the description of this video right now. I don't mind. And don't worry, it's not the last piece of content you will get from it, as I will be releasing a short cinematic showcase in the near future, like I used to do with my other mocks. So it won't be the last time you will see it, but for today, I think that's everything I wanted to cover. Now it's sadly time to take it all apart and prepare for the next mock, which many of you may already have heard about. I will be making a collaboration build with my friend from the channel Edge of Bricks and it will be a sequel to our castle build from 2020, the Siege of Bricks. So brace yourself castle fans because we have something even better than the last time in stores for you this year. But now it's time to wrap this up. So leave your thoughts about the build in the comment section below, leave a like if you enjoyed watching this mock, subscribe if you haven't done that yet and share this video to all of your Star Wars and Lego fan friends. And most importantly, stay safe and keep it bricking.